Hey everyone and welcome to another Unreal C++ tutorial. This is another of those quick fire topics where we're going to go through something specific and this week we're looking at the take damage function. Just a quick bit of background on this one before we jump into this. The take damage function is available on anything which is of the actor class or derived from that. So pretty much everything in the world that we have here is going to be able to take damage. Therefore you can implement this and follow along on essentially any type of class as long as it is derived from an actor. I'm going to use the character base class uh, and I'll be doing that purely because the character that I have in the world here just spawned by default so I can do some tests and show some examples within that class. So if you're following along exactly you may have the same classes as I have. If you have the character base then you can add this in here as well. I'm just going to hop over to the header file and the way that we're going to be using this is that we'll be looking at the exact take damage function and we'll be doing this by overriding it within our own class. And just to answer the usual question I get, this is Rider for Unreal that I'm using. You can download it from the marketplace. It's currently having a free trial period, and then I think it's going to be a paid IDE after that, but it is very good, and I enjoy the autocomplete features that it provides. The syntax for this is we're going to be overriding a function. As I said, it's called the take damage, so it's going to be a virtual float take damage. And then we can see here the signature that this takes in are going to be of type float named damage or damage amount. We then have an F damage event named damage event, an A controller named event instigator, and then finally the A actor named damage causer. So that's going to be, of course, in order, the amount of damage that we're providing or passing in, the type of event that was, so it could be something like a radial damage or a point damage as an example, the owning controller, usually this is going to be either the AI controller or the player controller would be an example of what these will usually be passed in as. And then finally, the actor which caused the damage. So this could be something like a grenade or a piece of shrapnel if it's like a sub-object. Then you can pass that in to specify what you were hit by. And of course, finally, we have the keyword override because we are overriding this from the base A actor implementation. With that declared in the header, I'm just going to use one of the shortcuts for Rider and get this to generate the definition by declaration. So this is going to automatically place this into the code file. If you're following along in something else, Visual Studio does allow this. Some IDs may not. So it's just a case of obviously copying all of the things which are in the header file, adding the class type and the standard kind of function implementation here. Now, the other thing, I'm just going to jump back to the header very quickly to actually show something and track something here. I need to add some sort of concept of the health that we're going to be tracking. So first of all, in the property section, I'll add a float named health, which will be set to zero. And of course, I'll add another float named default health, which I'll set to 100. Then back over in the code file inside of the class constructor, I'll just make sure that we set the player's health to equal the default health as soon as we start so that we'll fill that health value up and have something to play around with in a moment. Back at the bottom, what I want to do inside of the take damage function, we're going to use the values being passed in and then we'll just do some Unreal kind of event logs to show the update and that something is actually happening. So the first thing of course is going to get the current health and we'll take the damage amount away from the health that we have. This would be a good place to put our first log. So I'm just going to use the UE underscore log of type log temp and warning. And I'll just set the text to read health and then return what the current health is, passing in that as the argument. And then to finish this up, I'm just going to use a very simple if statement. So this is going to check whether health is less than or equal to zero. Because we don't really have any death logic, that isn't the idea of this. Of course, you would at this stage play some particle effects, remove the actor or whatever you needed for your game. We're just going to use another log here to say that the health is depleted. And of course, remember, this is a float type function. So we're going to need to drop down a couple of lines and return a value. Generally, you'll return the damage amount. If you had something like damage modifiers, then you may want to return the like updated damage amount or something. So this is just the raw damage amount that's being passed in. If you were multiplying that by, like I just mentioned, a modifier of a certain pickup or something, then you may want to return the full amount that was applied to the player. With that done, we can compile and check for spelling or syntax errors, but you already know how to do that. So I will see you back over in the engine. When you have all of that confirmed to working, you may be asking or wondering how we're actually going to test this, as at the moment we haven't actually set anything up to call the damage function. If we go into the place actors tab over here, what I'm going to look for is something called a pain causing volume. So this is just a physics volume. 
it has an overlap event and it will cause a set amount of damage as we can see here on the right every set amount of time. If we have custom damage types you can put those in, uh, we can just leave it to the default damage type though, make sure that it causes pain on entry just to do a quick test, and tick that it is indeed a pain causing volume. With that done, if we press play, remember roughly where that was in the world as we're not going to be able to see that, we want to make sure we've got the output log, uh, remember we're looking for the health update outputs, and we can see just there that we're getting the temp log warning of the current number of health or current amount of health that the player has. The other thing that we're going to look for as well is whether or not that will kind of completely deplete the health. So what you may want to do here is just up this to something much higher. So let's say 50. Come back in, find that again. And we can see that the health has been depleted. And of course in a proper game you'd want to cap that so that if you had zero or less health that that is kind of capped, stopped and we wouldn't be causing damage anymore. But of course this was just to get the damage function working. Now the final thing I wanted to show is that th using this volume is perfectly fine but if you wanted to know how this is actually working what we can do is with our pain causing volume selected we can right click on this and we can just open the pain causing volume dot h. This will open this up in your IDE and in the code file we just want to look for the function which is going to be are responsible for causing the pain. So all that's doing is that's down here is cause pain to. It's taking in the other actor which is going to be the thing which is overlapped with it and all you want to do is like I said this is a generic a actor function so we can assume that as long as this is an actor we're going to be able to call this take damage function. So it's finding the other thing that it's collided with. It's passing in the damage times the pain interval. So that's going to be the damage amount we can see here. The event is the one that we've selected. The instigator, which is going to probably default to itself, and then, or the uh, player controller zero even, and then damage causer, sorry, is defaulting to itself. So that's pretty much it. So if you were doing this for something like I've mentioned, a grenade or even a weapon, you would most likely line trace from the end of your weapon, find whether or not you've hit an actor and if you have then you're going to call this take damage function from that line trace and pass this message to the thing that the line trace has hit and then pass along all of the information such as the amount of damage, the cause there, the t damage type and things like that. So it's super easy to use. Uh, you've got this nice pain causing volume if you ever needed to reference this. There's not very much documentation on this function. So if you ever forget how to do this, you can always drop into this and there's some examples already in the engine how you can set something like this up quite nicely and easily. So yeah, I just thought rather than setting up a, an entire class just to call this one function, I wanted to show something which a lot of people don't seem to know about is the pain causing volume and the way that we can use some of the default functions from that class. And even though I said it wasn't the main point of the topic, that was bugging me knowing that the issue was there. So I've just come back in and very quickly updated a new quick if check here. So if the health is less than or equal to zero when we enter this, we're just going to return out of the function and not apply any damage. So this is useful. It is something I realize would be useful to mention for maybe new developers. Uh, sometimes you don't want to immediately remove the thing that's just died or taken damage from the world. So you may, as an example with your character class, you normally uh, keep the character in the world, you'll make it play a death animation, maybe pour some blood or whatever. So if you didn't add a check like this to account for whether you still have any health, that means that you would potentially be able to apply more damage. And because we're looking for less than or equal to zero here, that would actually, if we had like a full death function, that would essentially recall the death function, replay the animation, replay the particle effects over and over, even though you're already kind of a corpse on the floor. I just figured that this would actually be quite useful to mention, and this is a nice simple way to stop that from happening. So if we have already died or the health is zero, then we can stop any of the further logic from taking place, just in case you wanted your actor to still remain in the world for a set amount of time after they've passed. With all of that implemented, that is the take damage function thoroughly explored and explained inside of C++ and Unreal. If you enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That greatly helps the channel to grow and is really appreciated. And of course, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get the updates on any of the weekly video uploads. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.